everybody, today I'm going to take a look at another plug and play system, the Atari Flashback 2, complete with a sticker that gives it a wood grain look. The system itself looks like a miniaturized version of the Atari 2600, the original. You have a power button reset. You have two difficulty switches, which are you now push in and out instead of flipping. You also have a select button on the back. You have your TV type switch between black and white and color. It came with a power adapter, no batteries needed, that you plug in there, and you can also uh, plug in just about any compatible Atari 2600 controller in that. You probably can even use a Sega Genesis controller if you wanted to play Atari games that way, which is how I like to typically play them. But it also came with two of these joysticks, which look like the original, but they're slightly smaller, have the Fuji symbol. And you can now unscrew the joystick itself if you want to, you know, store it away, it makes it a little bit easier to store because you don't have anything kind of sticking up there. However, they're also prone to breaking. And once they break, they're very difficult to use. But thankfully, as I said before, you can replace it with just about any other uh, joystick that's compatible with the original system. And you plug it in your TV with these RCA kind of composite cables with the mono audio. So let's go ahead and take the Atari Flashback 2. Let's plug it in my TV and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the games. The Atari Flashback 2 came out in 2005, a year after the original Atari Flashback, which I reviewed in episode 403. It was made by the same group as the original Flashback. The Flashback 2 advertised 40 games, but really it has more than that, which I will get to a little later on. The games are grouped into four sets that are accessed on the menu screen, but once you select a game to play, to play another game you must turn off the system and then back on. The four areas of the menu screen are Adventure Territory, Arcade Fantasy, favorite space station and skill in action zone. The first game is the classic adventure, which is still fun to play here. The second game is a hack of adventure called Adventure 2. The third game is another classic, Haunted House. For the fourth game, we have Return to Haunted House, a hack of adventure that combines two of my favorite games on the system. The fifth game is Secret Quest, a game that combines the elements of adventure with outer space and The Legend of Zelda. The sixth game is Wizard, an unreleased prototype that honestly isn't that great. The seventh game is a hack of asteroids that makes it look more like the arcade version. The eighth game is a homebrew version of Pong, which for some reason is scrolling when I transported it, but actually is one of my favorite versions of Pong I've ever played, even though it uses a joystick. The ninth game is a hack of asteroids called Asteroids Deluxe, which for some reason was giving me a lot of problems when I was playing it on my TV. The tenth game is one of my favorites, Battle Zone, based on the Atari 20. 2600 version. The 11th game is Centipede, again based on the 2600 version, and the 12th game is a homebrew version of Lunar Lander, which I'm not a big fan of. And for the 13th game we have Millipede, followed by Missile Command, both great games. For the next game we have another hack of asteroids called Space Duel, which once again gave me lots of problems when playing on my TV. The 16th game is a homebrew called Cavern of Mars. The 17th game is Quadrant. In some versions of the Flashback 2, the voice didn't come on, but it was fixed for later versions such as mine. The 18th game is the unreleased prototype Saboteur. The 19th game, in my opinion, is the boring Space War. Next we have Yars Return, a hack of Yars Revenge that just like some of the Asteroids hacks gave me problems on my TV. And then we have the classic Yars Revenge itself. Next up is 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, which I really don't care for that much. Next we have the unreleased prototype Aqua Venture, which was actually pretty fun to play. That is followed by another homebrew, which I just reviewed in episode 449, Atari Climber. Then we have the classic two-player combat and the prototype of Combat 2, followed by a hidden gem on the system, Dodge'em, and a game that was not released here in America, Fatal Run, which I was happy to see here. Then we have the unreleased prototype Frog Pond, which is just kind of okay. Then we have Hangman, followed by Human Cannonball, Maze Craze, which is best played with two players, Off the Wall, a late release breakout clone that's not half bad, Outlaw, which once again is best played with two players, the all-time great Pitfall from Activision, one of two Activision titles on the system, Radar Lock, another late release, and the other Activision game, the classic River Raid, Save Mary, an unreleased prototype that really didn't do much for me. And then for the last two games, we have Video Checkers and Video Chess, which I prefer the real thing. There's also a hidden paddle game section that can be unlocked by pressing up once, down nine times, up seven times, and down two times. This is in honor of the year 1972 or 1972, the year Pong came out. If you put in the code correctly, you can see a special paddle game menu where you can select either Super Breakout or Warlords. 
But to play them, after you select the game, you need to unplug your controller and plug in some paddle controllers. And to switch games, you need to turn off the system, turn it back on, repeat the unlock pattern with a regular joystick, and then plug back in the paddles. Outside of some of the issues I had with some of the hacked games, and outside of some of the problems with some variations of the systems, the graphics and sounds are closer to the originals than any other Atari plug-and-play system past or present. As a matter of fact, this plug-and-play is so close to the original, if you have the know-how, you can add a cartridge port to the system and play a large portion of the Atari 2600 cartridge library on it. Family friendly wise, this compilation would most likely get an E for everyone rating it for release today. At the time my research on eBay including shipping, used Atari Flashback 2s were going for $15 to $25. So what do I think of the Atari Flashback 2? Outside of some complaints including joysticks that are maybe prone to breaking, some graphical issues I had with some of the hacks, having to turn off the system to switch games, and naturally some of the 42 games not being that good, this plug and play has some great things going for it. Being able to use original controllers is a big plus. This also has a really great selection of games including some of my all time favorites like Adventure, Haunted House, Battlezone, Yard's Revenge, Pitfall, and River Raid, not to mention some overlooked gems like Dodge Em and Secret Quest, as well as some interesting and fun hacks and homebrews like Adventure 2, Return to Haunted House, and Atari Climber. But perhaps the best part is how close the quality is to the original, something that a lot of plug and plays still struggle to do today. So where am I going to rank the Atari Flashback 2? Believe it or not, I like this system so much that out of the 36 plug and plays I've now ranked, the Atari Flashback 2 is going straight to the top. The Atari Flashback 2 is highly recommended due to including some of the best games on the system and being able to use original controllers as well as how close it plays to the original. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. And check out some of my other many videos covering retro video games, toys, mini arcades, plug and plays and more. At this time, I'd like to thank Atari IO Rick for supporting the show on Patreon. Thank you, Rick. You too can help support the show, gain access to exclusive content and be able to vote on future games I review by signing up at patreon.com slash nosweargamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care everyone.